Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Attack IQ's Hack Your Career live stream. My name is Beverly Benson. I am the manager for cybersecurity education, and I'll be your host today. I'd love to introduce you to uh, the person that we're going to be learning about today. We're so super excited. I'd like to welcome Tracy Cohen. She's an information security engineer. Tracy, welcome. Hey, Bev, it's a pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for your willingness to share a little bit about yourself and your career in the field of cybersecurity. Of course, I'm excited to chat with everybody today. All right. So tell us, tell us briefly about yourself and your career. Sure. Um, so I'm very passionate about the InfoSec industry. I find it exciting and challenging, and I really never feel bored with the career I've chosen, which is awesome. Um, I've always been drawn to technology. You know, from a pretty early age, I was always the go to person if somebody needed help with their computer or their phone. Um, I was a teenager during the MySpace era, and I learned my first bits of HTML and CSS by kind of just stumbling through it until I got my page to look the way that I wanted. Um, and I've also always been somewhat of an adrenaline junkie. I was into action sports when I was younger, and these days I'm actually a licensed skydiver. Um, yeah, so I really wanted an exciting career that was going to keep me on my toes, you know. And I also wanted a career that was going to allow me to bring some sort of value that I could feel prideful about. Awesome. So. You know, when I graduated high school, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I enrolled in a liberal arts program at the local community college. And I kind of went through a couple different phases from there. I had considered being a nurse. I considered being a lawyer. Both of those didn't quite feel right. Um, I considered military and law enforcement, but there were some physical limitations that barred me from that. And then it finally hit me. If I go into cybersecurity, I can work with technology. Great, I'm good at that. Um, I can help protect businesses and people. Awesome, that will be rewarding. And I can have an exciting role that keeps me on my toes. So, you know, it was a perfect fit, really. That's so, awesome. yeah, thank you. Um, from there, I, you know, I got a bachelor's degree in computer science and I did a concentration in network security alongside that. And I kind of just built my way up from the bottom in the IT world. And fast forward today, I'm working as an information security engineer in a family of biopharma companies. And I absolutely love my job. Awesome. And yeah. the field of cybersecurity is so very happy to have you. Glad yeah, you thank you. I'm <laughs> glad you chose it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's back up a little bit to the beginning of your career. How important were internships in your early career? So with internships, I kind of took an odd approach. Um, I didn't really take any IT focused internships. Um, one of the coolest ones I did was I interned for the United States Attorney's Office. And what I was doing there was I was assisting the lead investigator with various tasks that were related to criminal investigations. Um, so, you know, of course, I really can't divulge too much detail on that since most of what I worked on was classified. Um, but, you know, I can say that the subject matter of the investigations range from murder to dark web criminal activities, which was all incredibly interesting to me. Um, and, you know, I kind of got to play around with like a lot of cool gadgets and technology that are used in modern day criminal investigations, which just like further inspired my curiosity about technology and security. Okay. So because my next question is like, did any of those internships kind of nudge you towards cybersecurity? But you've answered that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I see also I would think that you also got that that adrenaline rush from being involved in different types of cases. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, another cool thing that I got from that was that I also developed like this great mindset for interpreting like malicious actions and motives. 
um, you know, while working on all these criminal investigations. And like on the technical side a little bit, it also introduced me to a lot of relevant investigation concepts like appropriate evidence handling and stuff like that. Okay, awesome, yeah. awesome. Were there any other skills that you were able to take directly from those internships that you brought into the field of cybersecurity with you? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I started to learn like how to work in a hectic environment, how to interact with people that, you know, have a lot on the line and, you know, how to gain trust from people. And those were all skills that definitely translated right into InfoSec. Those are great. And I love that you mentioned that, Tracy, because it's so important that individuals that want to get into a field, the field of cybersecurity, understand that some of those skills that you just spoke about are not technical skills. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of great soft skills that yes. are going to aid you in InfoSec. Absolutely. Yeah. So switching gears a little bit, you know, while you when you're early in your career, what did your professional network look like? Did you have any mentors? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, early on in my career, I didn't really have one specific mentor. Um, what happened was at one of the first jobs that I had, there was, you know, a small group of females who were working at that company. It was a managed service provider. And um, we all kind of band together and we would kind of mentor each other, whether it was for stuff in work, we were trying to overcome obstacles at work or issues in our personal lives. Um, and that group of girls, they've got a huge range of skills. They're all in different areas in the IT world. And they've been, you know, that type of network that I had there was extremely valuable. You know, I think they helped me overcome a lot of challenges. I was able to help them. And, you know, still to this day, we get together, we all mentor each other. And that was really valuable, you know, early on in my career. Um, and I, I do have a great mentor right now as well. Um, you know, not only is he very knowledgeable in the infosec realm, but he's an excellent leader as well. He's been extremely helpful with encouraging me to get more specialized training in various infosec topics. And he's also been guiding me on how to step up as a leader so that hopefully one day soon I can transition into a management role. Go on. You could do this. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now thinking about the mentoring relationships that you have had, either through the group of uh, women that you said that you all banded together, is there any just one nugget of wisdom that you uh, learned from them that you would love to share with the audience? Sure. Yeah. Um, so there was. Oh, we um, are you on mute? We can't hear you. Try unmuting yourself, Tracy. No, I can read your lips, but I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. If we can all just wait one moment and we'll get this uh, technical difficulty resolved. Are you able to hear me? <gasps> Welcome back. All right. All right. Sorry so, about that, everyone. <laughs> I want to hear, if you wouldn't mind repeating everything you said, we don't want to miss a minute of it. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so a little nugget of wisdom. I'll tell you guys a little story real quick. Um, so there was one time where I had kind of gotten burned. I got into a little bit of trouble because I had taken action on information that somebody else had stated to me was true. Okay. Um, and, you know, that kind of came back to bite me. And while I was discussing this with my mentor and kind of going over the situation to see, you know, where I could have done better, um, he had told me, trust but verify. And that is a phrase that has stuck in my head since then. Um, you know, I've learned it's not only applicable to IT and security, but also, you know, my personal life as well. Like, I generally like to trust people and believe them. 
I'm an optimist and I find that relationships are better when, you know, the other person feels like they are trusted and their word is not being second guessed. Um, but this, you know, can be a ha bad habit at times, especially in the infosec world. So I've learned how to, you know, gracefully accept what somebody is telling me, but still go verify its accuracy. Okay. I love that. I love that nugget. So for everyone listening, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so Tracy, tell us about your first cybersecurity role. What responsibilities did you have? Um, and how did you know that's what you wanted to do? Sure. Um, so my first real cybersecurity role was at a managed service provider. Um, if anybody doesn't know what a managed service provider is, it's basically um, a company that just does IT support. So if you're a small business and you want to outsource your IT, you can call an MSP and they'll come in and take care of everything from, you know, desktops to security. Okay. Um, so I was working for a company that provided IT services to a couple hundred different companies in the area. Um, and it was an information security analyst role was my first, you know, real breakthrough in the InfoSec world. Um, and, you know, some of the responsibilities that I had was, you know, it was really a wide range of things, but basically I would investigate and address any alerts that came in from various security platforms. I would analyze any suspicious emails that people were reporting as potential phishing. Um, I would configure policies for like EDR and DLP solutions and those types of like security operations tasks. Okay. Um, you know, and I, I also got to respond to like any active incidents, either internally um, or in a client environment. And I assisted with audits occasionally as well. So I had a really wide range of exposure there, which was great. Wow. How did you land such a really cool role first time out? That's amazing. So, you know, I, I had to work my way up a little bit. Um, I had started at that company right after college. I had no IT experience at that point, um, you know, because like I said, I didn't even take any IT focused internships. Um, so, you know, I had started out by just like filling out online applications for tons of entry level security jobs, you know, entry level. Um, and it really became clear pretty early on that it was going to be very difficult to find a security role, like, you know, entry level or not, without prior experience. So what I did was I kind of shifted my strategy and I went for entry level, just general IT roles instead. Um, so this company initially had hired me as a builds engineer, where my role mostly consisted of like setting up new computers for clients and hardware focused tasks like, you know, upgrading RAM and laptops and repairing keyboards and broken screens. Um, so right off the bat, I had expressed to management that, you know, what I truly wanted to be doing was security work. I made that clear with them. That was where I wanted to be. That was what was going to make me happy. Um, so after a few months, you know, I was moved on to the help desk team where I was addressing tickets and answering phone calls from end users and, you know, this was a hectic environment. It kept me on my toes, but it wasn't nearly as interesting as the security realm to me. Um, you know, however, looking back now, it was actually the key to my next career moves really, oh. because, you know, so, it, so um, in that role, what I did was I made a big effort to take like extra initiative beyond what was expected of me. Okay. Like, anywhere I could. I would jump on any security related tickets. I would volunteer to help with more complex issues. Um, I put effort into building trusting relationships with our clients and really just made it a point to show that I can go above and beyond. I'm eager to work in security. I'm eager to take on more responsibility. 
Um, and it really didn't take long. Management recognized that effort and they rewarded it by moving me onto the security team within a few months of me being in that help desk role. So, you know, in the end, like I did have to backpedal a little bit from my initial expectations about the job market when I got out of college. But, you know, starting from the bottom and working my way up really created a strong foundation for me. And, you know, in the end, I was able to break into the infosec industry in less than a year after graduating college. That's fan That's a fantastic journey. Thank you Thank for you. sharing that. Thinking about the first role, and the, tell, tell us about any challenges that you faced. That sure. Thinking about and think about this, you know, current, I think 2020, what did you learn and what would you have done differently with one of those challenges? All right. Um, so one of the challenges that I faced in that first role, and this is honestly a challenge that probably everybody in security is going to face anywhere, you know, at some point during your career. Um, but I dealt with a lot of clients that kind of had a poor attitude when it came to security. Like it wasn't anything that they were proactively thinking about, which honestly is fair. That's what we're here for. Um, but the issue was that they rarely wanted to provide any extra budget for security controls, like if we were proposing them. Um, and it was the type of situation where like, many people just didn't care about security until they experienced an incident. You know, so looking back now, I think I probably would have pushed a little bit harder to get a bit of the client's time okay. and then take that opportunity to prove the value of certain security measures. Um, you know, and there's a couple different ways you can do that. Like I've done it by presenting data from like similar industries about how certain vulnerabilities or attacks can lead to damage and what that damage is. Um, I've also done attack simulations to like demonstrate in real time, like, look, your systems are vulnerable to this. I just got in and was able to do this, okay. um, which tends to be effective because, you know, some people just don't believe it till they see it. Right. Seeing is believing. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you leverage any lessons learned from your first role uh, as you transition into your next role? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, from the MSP, I moved on to roles where I was given much more direct input with management, more tools and time at my disposal. And I have always made it a point to justify the value of any actions I'm taking, like especially if they increase costs. Um, and, you know, even if it's whether it's a big project or whether it's something like you know, somebody wants to know why email from this person is being held. Like I always try to explain the value behind the action that we're taking, because if people understand, you know, they're more likely to be on board with whatever you're trying to do. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Again, audience, if you have some questions, please put them in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you. And Tracy, what advice would you give individuals who are looking to get into the field of cybersecurity? Sure. So I've kind of got, um, you know, two different pieces of advice here. Okay. So first, um, you know, I want to tell you all that you may not find your dream role on day one. You're more, more than likely not going to. Um, and many, you know, many of these security roles are requiring experience. And then you fall into that catch 22 of not being able to get experience unless you have experience. So don't be afraid to take, you know, an entry level generic job in IT like a help desk role. There will be many opportunities for you to be proactive and show that extra initiative in order to move up the ladder. Um, I personally feel that MSPs are a great place to find these entry level roles. Um, now, MSPs do tend to get a bad rap regarding employee turnover rates and general happiness of employees, but I found it to be the perfect experience and stepping stone for my career. 
um, it gave me a lot of exposure to a large variety of technology. And I was able to work with a wide range of industries, which was cool. Um, you know, working with different industries helped me identify like which industries and types of companies I liked supporting more than others, um, which can be super helpful when you're ready to move on to somewhere new. You've kind of you've got the lay of the land. You know what you know what type of company you want to work for. Um, you know, so then my my second piece of advice really is you know especially if you're going to start from the bottom and work your way up like that. Um, if you can find a company that's willing to pay for additional training and certifications, um, that's going to be extremely valuable. Uh, those can be pricey, those certifications, and any that you can get under your belt will help prove that you have working knowledge while you work, you, you know, you make your way up the career ladder. Um, and if it interests anybody, cloud security is super hot right now. It would be a great area to get training and certifications in. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that are migrating their entire environments to the cloud. And, you know, they're eagerly looking for people who are familiar with these new cloud security concepts. Um, you know, and that's, that's going to, the certifications are going to help you get that edge in and have somebody be able to trust you to give you that security task and to give you that role, um, you know, whether you have formal experience or not. Okay, great. So Tracy, I'm just going to take a look at the comment section because a couple of questions have come in from the audience that I would love to present to you. Sure. Sounds great. Okay. All right. So the first question is, what networking or educational resources um, do you find helpful to continue to grow in your career? Is there any resources that you can share? Sure. Um, so there are, there are a lot of InfoSec resources out there for training um, where they either do free training or, you know, they do like pay what you can training. Um, and those I found to be very helpful. They're not going to be all encompassing, you know, certification prep classes or anything like that. But you can get a lot of tidbits of info from, you know, free or very low cost, um, you know, training resources online. I, I can't mention any specific companies by name. Um, but there's lots of them out there. Um, another resource that I would love to talk about is um, the Women in Cybersecurity Organization. You know, obviously this is more focused for women, but they are a great organization to join. You're able to, you know, apply to get a mentor or be a mentor on there. They do conferences and stuff like that. Um, and I found that to be, you know, very useful to me as well. That's awesome. Thank you. Tracy, another question has come in. Sure. What was your most humbling security experience and how did you use it to strengthen your and your and or your customers uh, mental resilience? Sure. Um, so that's a great question. I guess, you know, one of my most humbling experiences was pretty early on in my career. Um, I could tell you guys another little story here. Okay. So during my first week of that um, information security analyst role, the lead engineer of the security team was on vacation, which left only two of us, including myself. And what happened was we got an emergency call from a business that was asking us to help them with live ransomware on their systems. Um, so this, you know, this is week one for me. And they had, you know, more than one location, hundreds of machines at each location. So what happened was, you know, the team was split up. I was given a team of engineers to assist me and was sent off to one of the locations to triage a situation. Um, you know, it was incredibly intimidating. I won't lie about that. I really was not sure I was even ready for it, you know. Um, but long story short, we were able to contain the ransomware. 
We were able to recover anything that had backups and essentially rebuilt their entire environment. Um, you know, it was a long few days, but it kind of gave me that, you know, that confidence that, okay, like this, this may have been scary. I may have not thought that I was ready, but I was able to pull it off and, you know, be successful in this. That's awesome. And your first week, it's like, phew. Yeah, it was a doozy. <laughs> but you were able to add value and you stayed the course. And that's fantastic. Yes. One absolutely. of our audience members is asking if you could please repeat the organization that you have encouraged women to become a part of. Yes. Uh, women in Cybersecurity, also known as WICS, W-I-C-S. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And another question has come in. When sure. you were a beginner, um, did you do any training on the side like Linux? Yeah, yeah, I definitely dove into um, some of the Linux stuff. I will not say that I'm an expert in Linux by any means, um, but some of the more fun stuff is going to be Linux based. Um, like when I first started out, I liked to you know, learn a lot about the, you know, about like the black hat side of things. Like I was learning how these hacks work and how different attacks develop and, you know, learning how to use those tools, things like Kali Linux and stuff like that. Um, and that was, you know, it was fun to me. Like I did a lot of I would learn how to use just this tool, you know, this thing that can, you know, brute force Wi-Fi passwords and you can compromise Wi-Fi networks. And, you know, of course I did it in safe lab environments, never test these things or learn these things on public systems. Um, but, you know, that was what was interesting to me in the beginning. Like, you know, I didn't want to go for a big, long certification um, as valuable as it is. Like I wanted to learn the fun hacking side of things. Okay. All right. Yeah. Feeding that uh, uh, need for adrenaline, are we? Yes, <laughs> always. <laughs> so you've mentioned certifications a couple of times. Are there any entry-level certifications that you would recommend to our audience uh, to seek? Sure. Um, so there are, you know, kind of two different tracks that I recommend. Um, CompTIA has a track of three different certifications, the A+, the Network+, and the Security+. Okay. And those three are kind of a great foundation to be able to get your general IT skills, your more advanced networking skills, and then move on to, you know, the security realm, because essentially everything that comes before that, you need to have that foundation before you can really be effective in the security world. Um, and another one I can recommend, um, I myself have my um, SSCP, um, and that is, you know, you can that does require formal experience, but what you can do is you can get it early on um, and you can be like an associate SSCP. Awesome. Um, so that you don't need the experience for it. You can go off and just take the test. And that's another one that's kind of all encompassing. And it really, it shows like working hands-on keyboard knowledge of best practices and critical security concepts. Awesome, thank you. Well, time is winding down. We don't have an, enough time for another uh, question, but I just wanted to say thank you so much, Tracy, for joining us today, sharing a little bit about yourself and your career. And as we close, do you have a mantra or a quote that keeps you inspired that you would like to share with the audience today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I have always liked the quote that goes, life begins at the end of your comfort zone, um, which was said by Neil Donald Walsh. And I like this quote because I've had many moments, you know, while going through school in my career path where I thought to myself, like, I can't do that, or it's too hard, or it's too much, or I'm too scared. 
Um, I had that thought when I took my first programming class, when I started going on job interviews, when I handled my first incident, the first time I jumped out of an airplane. Um, I still feel that way on some days when I'm presented with a daunting task, but you know, I just remind myself that the best things in my life have come when I've pushed myself outside of my comfort zone and gave it everything I had. Awesome. Oh, you are such an inspiration. Tracy, thank, thank you. you so much again. Uh, just good luck to you and your future endeavors. And I hope, audience, that you will join us again on our next uh, Hack Your Career Live. Thank you, Bev. It's my thank pleasure you. to be here. Yes. Have a wonderful day, Tracy. Thank Have you. a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you.